Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to do something kind of fun and kind of a little crazy. We're going to recreate the blink tag because it has been, you know, support for it has been removed over the years. And so we're going to try to recreate it using CSS animations. Now, if you have no idea what a blink tag is, don't worry about it. You're going to learn how to have some text just, you know, oscillate from being visible to being invisible. And if you know what the blink tag is, this might be a, you know, a nice visit back down something you might have done a long time ago that you kind of regretted, which is having blink tags all over your particular page. So the blink tag is something that was introduced as part of one of the very first HTML spec variants. You know, the Netscape browser supported, I think Internet Explorer supported shortly afterwards. And it was very simple in what it did. It allowed you to specify some text that essentially blinked. Now there's a very good chance that those of you here have no idea what that looks like. So let me go ahead and find it for you and play it back. So if you were never lucky enough to be around to see the blink tag in action, here's a video that I actually recorded a long time ago of the blink tag just before it was removed from all the browsers. And here's what it looks like. It has some text that says hello. And notice that it just keeps blinking, you know, on and off in a very, you know, very rhythmic, simple way. And, you know, some might say in a very annoying manner, but that's okay though. So what we're gonna do is this. So this tag has been removed from the HTML spec. And if you try to use the blink tag today, you'll get nothing, it's, it's will be ignored. And, you know, because all the major browsers as far as I've known are now no longer supporting it, you know, even a browser from a year ago, no longer supported. So it's safe to say that this tag is now officially dead. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna use a CSS animation and we're going to recreate the blink tag and we're going to make sure that it lives on to educate, educate future generations. All right, so let me get to our code editor. And as you saw from the video earlier, what the blink tag does is pretty simple. It just oscillates some text from being visible to being invisible. And here's our HTML page. Right now, there's really nothing exciting going on here. I just have a simple HTML page. I have a heading element, which have given a class value of blink new. Let me wrap that in proper quotation marks. And then I have a style rule that targets that class value that essentially has a font size to a ridiculously large number, specifies a font family, and gives it a blue color. So this is our starting point. So what we're gonna do is create a piece of animation that, I, that causes the hello text to basically blink. And the way it's gonna look like is this. So first let's go ahead and define the animation property itself. So I'm gonna type in animation and I'm gonna specify the keyframes I'm gonna be using for this. I'm gonna specify my keyframes are gonna be called blink. And don't worry that we don't have any keyframes defined yet. We'll make sure to name it as blink when we get to that point. So the animation is gonna blink. Let's give it a duration of one second. And let's also have it run forever. You know, I'm not gonna specify any easing, so let's have it run forever. Blink, one second, infinite. Okay, so right now, nothing's gonna happen because the keyframes have not been defined yet. So let's fix that. So first I'm gonna go and declare the keyframes at rule, call it blink, because that's what we define in our animation declaration as what our keyframes will be called. And so what I'm gonna specify here are the various dates the blink tag is going to be active. So the 0% mark, we're gonna have our blink tag have a opacity of one. Now the prop we're gonna be animating to adjust how your blink tag, how the blink tag functions is the opacity property. Now, I know there are many properties available for you to use, but opacity is a good one because A, your browsers optimize it heavily to make sure it runs well and runs very performantly, which is less important for something like what we're doing here, but probably more important for more complex situations. But opacity is also the one of the few properties that is also animatable that also doesn't affect the layout of things. So I could animate the display property or animate the visibility property, but doing with, messing with those might make the layout of the things, either the element itself or the elements around it, kind of behave in a weird way. So we wanna make sure that we're just blinking in place without disturbing the things around you. So opacity is a good one for that. So we're gonna start off with opacity of one. I'm gonna keep our opacity at one until we get to the 70% mark where it's gonna be one as well. So what we're doing is essentially keeping the visibility of our item you know, at one for 70% of our animation's life. And what we wanna do is suddenly change it from being visible to invisible. There are many ways of doing that. I could use a steps easing function. I could use a normal easing function, modify the cubic Bezier curve to get the result that we want. But I'm gonna do something very primitive and very simple. Instead of having a, 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 a opacity animating, one way to ensure it doesn't animate is by specifying a keyframe that is as close to the previous keyframe as possible. And obviously you can go much closer, but 
76% is a good number. So you know, in 1% of our animation's life, we're gonna change the opacity suddenly from one to zero. And if you can see this animation, you know, play, your eyes are far better than most people's out there. So what we're doing is at 70% our opacity is at one, at 76% our opacity suddenly drops to zero, and it's gonna stay at zero until the very end of our animation, where we're gonna keep it at the same value until it loops. So the way one way of looking at it is this, is that our animation is visible, our text actually is visible for three quarters of our animation's life, and for the last quarter, last 24% of it to be precise, our text is invisible. And that closely maps to the way the blink function has behaved in the video we saw earlier and how it probably behaved when it first came out, you know, 20 or however many years ago it was first introduced. So there you have it. A really fun look at how you can use these animations to do something that is a little bit off the beaten path. Now, the interesting part is, yes, we were able to recreate the blink effect in you know, almost its original fidelity by using a CS animation, but the, the bigger takeaway is also, notice how our keyframes were arranged. You know, what we wanted was a sudden change from one state to another, visible to invisible, and instead of using easing functions for a different you know, steps function in this case, we were able to use a very simple trick of having keyframes that are very adjacent to each other, and that gives you a very similar effect as modifying any easing value that you might want to play with. So that's the, that's the important thing to take away from this. The most important thing is, hey, we recreated a blink tag. Who can say that? All right, so if you wanna learn more, go to croup.com where there's a bunch of content on this and other topics that might be of interest to you. If you have any questions with this effect or other effects, just go and post on form at croup.com where I and others would be happy to help answer your questions. And you can always find me on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube. I'm all over the place, so feel free to ping me. And if you like watching videos and learning from learning from in learning in that way, you might also learn reading them from books and Kindle or paperback editions. So I've written a lot of books so far. So by all means, click on the link here and you'll find something that might be of interest to you, maybe even animation related, who knows? So with that, we are done with this video. So be sure to tell your friends and enemies about this video, especially if they like or hate the blink tag. You know, I'm willing to appeal to both sides of the audience on this one. Those who love the blink tag, those who absolutely hate it, it's all good. And if you want to be notified of upcoming videos or things that I'm working on on YouTube, hit subscribe so that the subscriber number goes up and you know the world gets a little bit greener. That's, it, it happens. You, you subscribe to it, you'll see that the world just becomes greener. And if you want to be notified of things that I'm working on or the cool things that I found on the net, follow me on Twitter and Facebook for those little micro updates. And lastly, buy a book. You know, the books help sustain my various hobbies and interests. You know, for example, my latest hobby is going to various places and collecting seashells. And every book you buy, you help ensure that my seashell collection gets larger, which probably prevents a hermit crab somewhere from being able to find a home. So it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag of goodness in that one. All right, guys. See you guys next time.